what's going on good people welcome back to another episode of the trading challenge today is day number seven april the 18th 2023 we made some trades today so let's get into it all right so coming into today's session my goal was to only trade the setups that i know because i know that if i follow that route i have a much higher chance of being successful than i do if i didn't so Let's start our analysis at yesterday's closing price, which was 34136 Now, in the free market, we were kind of hovering around that price, going back and forth, back and forth. But when the market opened at 930, we quickly sold off away from that price level and made a low at 34063 Now, at that low, we established the double bottom, which should be a reversal signal and should lead to prices continuing up for a good amount of time. But when we saw that double bottom fail and then we saw a bear channel get established, that told us everything that we needed to know about the trend. Because if we had a strong move to the downside, that tells you that sellers are in control. And then the buyers tried to take back over and they failed. And then the sellers stepped back in and said, OK, it's time for us to do our thing. So that led me to trade one where I went short after a double bottom failure plus a bear channel being established. Now. This trade actually got stopped out for break even because once I'm up a certain amount, my stop gets moved to break even automatically. And that was the case for this trade, which is okay. The break even stop protects you in the case of the market reversing against you. Now, what I want to work on is being able to catch multiple trades within one specific setup. So what I usually do is if I see a setup, I'll take one trade and then I wait for the next setup and take another trade. But on some occasions, I'll be able to get multiple trades out of one specific setup. So for this example, I would have been able to get trade number one right here. I also had another opportunity to short on this wick right here, as well as short two candles below it at the top of the channel once it hit it again. So that's something I could work on definitely. But as we see the channel continue, then we see the sellers just come in with strong momentum and start pushing the market down with no green candles whatsoever. So we had a one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten candle spike to the downside with no green candles. So for 10 straight minutes, we had nothing but selling. Now that right there is one of my favorite setups also where we have a spike where all of the candles are one color. So in this situation, we have a downward spike where all of the candles are all red. So within the third to fourth candle, if the momentum looks strong and I can see that the buyers are not really stepping in, that's where I like to go short and hold my trade for a scalp target. So that's what I did in this scenario. I got long, I mean, excuse me, I got short after one, two, three, four. After the fourth candle form, that's when I got short. I got short on the open of this fifth candle right here. And then I was able to take prices down back to my scalp target and get out. Now, what's interesting is that we had two of my favorite setups happen back to back. So actually three of them. We had a bear channel that led to an all red spike to the downside, which ended up becoming a reversal that led to a higher low, which is what I call a downtrend reversal, higher low established. Now, if you guys remember from last week, we went over this uh we went over this pattern and we talked about how common it is in the market you'll see it multiple times you know these examples are from 2020 2020 but we can see that the exact same thing and the exact same patterns of supply and demand happen very regularly over time so once i saw that setup form i recognized it and i said okay i think i know exactly what i'm looking at and that's when I took the trade that I did at trade number four. Now, the only thing is I should have held that trade. That's where I went wrong. I got a little bit shaken up when prices came back down to make the new higher, the next higher low in the sequence. Now, I got afraid because initially this was the top for that entire long move from the bottom that we made at around 980. We pushed up, made a higher low pushed up, established resistance, came back, made a double bottom to re a double bottom and a higher low in comparison to where we came from. So once we pushed up to here and we pulled back, I'm like, mm, the overall trend is down, so it might just reverse on me. 
because I was expecting what happened over here to happen right here. But it turns out that I had one last push before I could have got out. So that's something that I need to work on. Just if I have a trade, hold it until it hits my target or until it comes back to my break even price. So overall, I made gains on that one, but I could definitely do better, a lot better on that type of scenario. And I also want to discuss what happened at 1030. We also had another reversal just like we had before. So we had two downtrend reversals, higher lows established within the span of 30 minutes, which usually tells you that the market is about to bottom because what will happen is it'll try and make a bottom right here. It'll fail and then it'll try it again down here. And that one is the one that usually succeeds. But I was super skeptical about taking that one because in my head, I said, well, what are the probabilities that I get my same setup back to back within the same 30 minute period? I was like, nah, I don't know. But look, you got to trust and believe in your analysis. If you see the chart pattern forming, then hey, you just got to take it and accept the risk that comes with it. So that was definitely something I could have learned because look at this. We had a strong sell off strong reversal a higher low gets established and then prices actually ended up moving back up to the top of this zone so i could have got a nice 50 points out of that one if i would have went long at the lower high like i did over here so overall i made some decent trades today but it's still a lot of room for improvement i'm feeling like i'm leaving a lot of good points on the table that I could easily collect without having to take exorbitant amounts of risk. So I want to be able to maximize my efficiency when I'm in the markets. I don't just want to make whatever profits I can and leave. I want to make as much as I can and then leave. So that's something that I want to work on going forward. And I'll definitely do some back testing tonight and practice those skills. So I appreciate you guys for tuning in with me today. Day number seven. Tomorrow is Wednesday, April the 19th. I'll see you at 9.30, and we can run it back then. All right, now.